In the spondylothoracic dysplasia version of JERK-11, the ribs are a bone plate protruding from the spine, extending anteriorly, forming a very short thorax. The thoracic spine is very short, 24% of normal, and it provides shortened height to the lung. The bone plate of the ribs also compresses the lung. This provides restrictive lung disease. The expansion thoracoplasty for this is a wedge osteotomy of the fused bone plate of the ribs with the apex of the osteotomy at the T6 proceeding anteriorly until the bone plates and become separate ribs. Taking a freer or a pen field elevator, you insert it under, loosening the periosteum and the pleura to protect the lung, and then using a kerosene rongeur, begin to perform the osteotomies, starting from lateral to medial, working in a slow fashion. Once completed, you spread the proximal and distal fused rib mass and the apex tends to spread laterally. The vector is usually a number four, the smallest available, and it's wedged laterally and then pushed medially to help distract the proximal and distal portion of the fused ribs apart. The central apex uh, automatically uh, spreads lateral as seen in this model. Pushing it more medial gives you more vertical expansion of the operation. You mark proximal and distal where the rib cradle caps are to be placed using a burr and also a curette to form a hole large enough for them. Then you place the device back into the fused uh, rib mass through the osteotomies and then wedge it medially until it approximates the holes. Once this is forced in, you can use the grasper to help force the device in. Approximately 30% of the time, this may cause a small fracture, uh, usually of the distal rib mass, but this is of no consequence. You insert the rib cradle in proximally first, and then uh, manipulate it so it inserts into the vector, and then use a lock to secure the construct. This is tapped in. And once in place, use a lock inserter to make sure it is uh, securely in the device. The next task is to go distally, is also inserting a rib cradle cap, and then rotating it in so it fits into the vector. Once in place, a rib cradle cap lock is also inserted. This is tapped in, and once again, the lock inserter is used to uh, check to make sure it's uh, securely into the device. Now, using the uh, shim, which is available in the Vector 1 set, you distract a part to the device so the holes line up, and then use a distraction lock. First proximally, it's tapped in, and the uh, lock inserter is next used to secure it. And then distally, the same is done. The shim is inserted, and then the lock placed in. The procedure is now complete. As you see, the uh, thorax is expanded vertically. There is some lateral expansion, and the thorax is enlarged to some degree. You see inside, there's, uh, it's very low profile as well as posteriorly.